Right, so we've just come off the hill and now we're going to look at a, at a high level feed budget just to really understand the uh, the relationship between um, the demand profile of the stock we've seen and obviously the feed supply that's on offer. So in front of us here we've got a, a pretty simple but um, a feed budget there that, that takes into account both the feed demand and the feed supply. So we're going to work through this pretty methodically really around just understanding what's available um, and what, um, what our demand is going to be. So Sully's got to identify it as hill block first and we'll just work through that, Sully. So if you can start populating some of those green cells and just talk about what we're at, start dates, and um, and where we want it to head. Yeah, cool, thanks, Ed. Okay, so up the top here, I've just put the start date as today, and the end date, um, roughly, roughly set stocking. Um, the farm area, I've just put the hill country, so 150 hectares of hills, um, and then that's worked out over 88 days to get through to set stocking. So after we condition scored things yesterday, um, all my ewes and tutus are all mixed in together. Uh, sorry, Trevor Cook, I know you'd say you shouldn't do that, but just for simplicity on my smaller block, um, that's what I've done. But like we said yesterday, we look after the tutus pretty well. So I've got 515 ewes, which I know are in really good nick and they don't need a heap of feeding. So what drives demand is so 515 ewes and there'll be about 67 kgs live weight. So at the moment, we've got that set at 2% of body weight. So 2% of their body weight is how much feed they'll eat. So that comes to 1.3 kgs of dry matter a day. Um, what you have to remember is that you, even though we're saying she's going to eat 1.3, if we let her, she'll probably eat two. Um, and that's where those grazing residuals that we talked about yesterday are really quite important. Uh, and then light use, I had 431 use that were just a bit off. Uh, so I've called them 62 kgs, but for the feed requirement, we're saying she's going to eat two and a half percent of body weight. So that's 1.6 kgs of dry matter a day, and that just allows for her to eat a bit more. Uh, we're going to feed her a bit better and um, hopefully put that little bit of condition on. Um, and just remember, she won't do that if we're grazing down low to that 950 kgs of dry matter. That's where those residuals are really important. To restrict her maintenance, we have to graze down a bit lower. To keep her cranking along, we can't afford to graze down too low. So that's quite important, the practical side of making this work. Um, cattle, we didn't look at the heap yesterday, but there is actually 36 cows up there and 107 R2 heifers. They're just trade heifers. Um, so the cows, 550 kgs live weight, and we're putting them at 1.5%. Of their body weight and the heifers at two percent so that's just maintaining them they're, they're probably got another two weeks of just chewing on some some rougher paddocks and then i might, might have to look at putting them in with some use or something like that but at the moment that'll work so that drives the demand for those okay so we got to total i've got 12 stock units per hectare on the hills which is, is enough uh, we'll get some of those cattle out of there at set stocking um 833 kgs of live weight per hectare which again is is plenty up on those hills so my demand for all of those animals is 16.9 kgs of dry matter per day. So we'll just remember that figure. It's quite a good one to know. I don't know if anyone gets those emails from Beef and Lamb that sort of predicts each week what your farm's going to be growing. Um, but mine probably uh, would be growing a bit more than that now that we've had this little bit of rain, but it, it, it certainly won't grow that through the winter. Um, okay, so here we go. Pasture growth rate. I've quite boldly assumed that I'm going to grow 20 kgs of dry matter a day in May. We've just had this little bit of rain. Um, and that, that that's doable, but it's, it's probably a bit. So I want to really keep an eye on this, and I'll come back to that point later on. Um, oh, no, I'll tell you what, I'll touch on it now. So that's saying we're growing 20 kgs of dry matter a day. If my demand's 17 over here, that means my covers should be lifting. So a good way just to check this is going to work is I'm going to go back out in about 20 days' time and probably measure some more grass and just make sure the covers on my farm are lifting. And if they're not, this isn't working and I'm going to have to come up with a new plan, which I've done probably about 20 times since the start of the year. Uh, then June, 12 kgs of dry matter a day, that's just about what we grow in June, and then eight in July. Those are just historical numbers. Um, I know them pretty well off the top of my head, 
if you don't, just ring someone that you know in your area that's a bit of a guru with this sort of stuff, and I'm sure they'll be happy to share it with you. Um, so that's the top part of this feed budget is all about demand. So what are we eating? The second part, which is what we've just done, feed supply. And also in here, we've got supplements. Um, that's about what we're growing or we're going to be offering. So I'm not going to, there's no supplements up there. And um, we will get nitrogen on just pre-lambing. Um, but that obviously won't really account for much in here. Um, if you had put nitrogen on or something like that, you might account for it there. Okay, so our total supply per hectare is 13 kgs of dry matter a day over those 80 odd days. But I'm eating 16.9. So that mass doesn't quite work. That means I'm going to be losing ground every single day. We'll hope to gaining ground in May, but then losing ground in June, July. So it's worked out that, oh, sorry, we did our pasture covers yesterday. They came in for the hills at 1,533 kgs of dry matter a hectare. Over that 88 days, I'm going to lose about 338 kgs of dry matter, which means I'm going to get to set stocking and I'm going to be at a bit under 1,200 kgs of dry matter per hectare. That's, like I said, if I've got fat use, I don't mind set stocking on slightly lighter covers, but that's probably a little bit light for me because just remember that's an average, which means I'm probably going to have plenty of ground at 900 and not a heap of ground at more than 14 or 1,500. So for me, I don't really like this. It's not going to work for me. Um, so I came up with a plan. What I might do is come back up the top. In my light use, I might grab 150 of those of the very lightest ones, and I might just put them in with some uh, trade lambs on the flats. So now my 431 light use is going to turn into 281. All of that mass is going to flow through exactly what we did before. I've still got a bit of a deficit in there. So I'm still going backwards at 200 kgs of dry matter. I'm getting to set stocking at 1300. Uh, I'm probably still not real super comfortable with that. But what I'll do is I'll just keep an eye on things, keep an eye on covers as we're going. And I might just pull some more of these R2 heifers out through the winter as we go. 